medieval village. Imagine that you have just travelled back in time. It is the year 1390. You have come to a medieval village. What do you see? You are standing on the edge of a field. But it looks different. It is much, much bigger than fields today. The field looks like it is divided into strips, like allotments. Only they are big too. Each one is about an acre, with a ditch marking the boundary. Two thirds of the fields are growing grain, like wheat, oats or barley. The other fields seem to be mostly weeds, with cattle, sheep, goats or pigs grazing. All of the animals are much smaller than farm animals today. Some men are working in the fields. One is guiding a plough that is being pulled by oxen. You follow the path through a small wood. Even that looks different. Some trees, like willow, are coppiced to produce straight poles which have all kinds of uses. Other trees have been thinned to encourage them to grow big to give wood to make things with. There are no sticks on the ground. Every one has been collected for firewood. Now you are walking down the road into the village. It is dry and the road is covered with a white dust that kicks up in little clouds as you walk. You realise that it is quiet, so quiet. Nearby a group of children are playing in the road, barefoot and wearing rough woolen tunics. You can hear the sound of so many birds singing in the trees all around. A simple wooden bridge crosses the little stream. As you look down, you see that the water is teeming with fish. A pair of swallows swoop low over the stream. You notice that some of the water from the stream has been diverted to power a water wheel for a mill. Inside the door you can see the miller busily grinding the villagers' corn into flour. The miller will take some of the flour as payment for his work. The houses are mostly huddled around a big stone church that towers above them. You look inside the church. The walls are covered with brightly coloured paintings. There are also lots of statues of famous saints. As you walk past, you notice a big grass mound in the corner of the graveyard. It is a plague pit. Half the people that lived in this village died in recent outbreaks of the plague. They lie buried under that mound. The houses in the village are low single-storey buildings, each with a tall, steeply sloping thatched roof. The smell of wood smoke makes you notice that each one has smoke from its fire lazily drifting from a vent in the top of the thatch. These houses are made of what they are standing on. In this village it is a grey coloured stone. Curiosity makes you look in through an open door. 
Inside, the crowded little room is packed with a jumble of possessions. Firewood is stacked in a corner. Precious pans and tools hang on the walls. Pots, bowls, candlesticks and all manner of other things line the shelves. A fire is burning on a raised square on the floor. A metal cooking pot hangs over it, with pottage gently bubbling inside. Pottage is a thick soup made of whatever is growing in the garden, flavoured with some herbs. At one end of the room is a bed with someone sleeping under sheepskin blankets. At the other end is a table with bowls and bread. Herbs and legs of bacon hang from the beams of the ceiling. You walk across the little room and out the other door. Herbs and vegetables are growing in the garden outside. There is a pigsty. Skeps of bees are kept for their honey in a shelter. There is a well shared by the houses around. Oh, you notice an appalling smell and realise you're standing next to the toilet. The toilet is just a wooden seat over a hole. Emptying the toilet is the job of the gong farmer. It smells like he is needed right now. You notice people coming and going from a more important house nearby. This is the Reeves house with a barn next door. Most people who live in the village are villains, which means that they are not free. They must work three days a week for the lord of the manor. In return, they get their home and land. The villains come to the Reeves barn each day to collect their tools and be told what jobs to do on the lord's land. Inside the Reeves house, there is a room that looks like a pub. This is because the Reeve is the only person in the village who is allowed to brew and sell beer. Part of the money that people pay for their drinks is paid as a tax to the Lord of the Manor. There is a big stone tithe barn in the village. This is where people bring a tenth of their crops, a tithe, which pays for the priest and to look after the church. Inside the barn is a scribe writing down a list of the things that people have given. He is writing with a feather made into a pen called a quill. Outside are the village stocks where people are locked and punished for breaking the law. Someone is coming out of the house. He's asking us what we're doing. I think it's time to go, 